closer to the fan artist experience welcome to real rock nights and pretty pumped once again I, I know i say i'm pumped a lot but i actually am pumped so i'm not gonna lie to you man i'm talking to blake from saul how's it going man good man happy to be talking to you again it's been a minute yep it, it has been now uh so when we talked the last time it was uh in when you were playing that uh uh small festival the music, uh, music by Die festival yep, yeah yep. and uh we were talking about uh you setting down your bass to actually focus on singing and fronting the band and uh, uh you actually said well uh, we'll talk about that in a little while. So here I am. I want to talk to you about that now, since you've been doing it a while. Are you are you feeling pretty comfortable fronting? Um, I'm getting there. I think I would have felt more comfortable uh, throughout the touring of this year. So now I'm back to like square A. Um, I'm uh, not hiding behind my bass anymore. But uh, um, no, I'm definitely getting more comfortable at doing it. Um, I was always the singer of the band, but uh, I could always fall behind my bass and, and, and rock that out, you know. Um, but I enjoy it a lot. I enjoy it a lot. And it's nice to have Will in the band, too. He adds a, a dynamic live for sure where he's, you know, his wet boy Willie. He's uh, pretty squirrely up there on there's, stage. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a little energy going on in that boy. There yeah. really is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's the crazy one of the group for sure. Now, what about uh, the one member that I have not met yet, because uh, you guys are almost becoming like a spinal tap and changing drummers all the time. But I, of course, I don't think anybody's imploded on stage yet. But uh, uh, your drummer, can you tell me about him? Give me, give me a clue on what's going on with that. Yeah, um, you know, so anybody that doesn't know the backstory, um, uh, Joe stepped down from the band um, due to, uh, he want, he's starting his family, his wife was pregnant, he was going to go that route, which, you know, awesome, you know, that's always a good thing to, to, to do. Um, so Miles uh, Claiborne from, he's originally from Columbus, Ohio, but he was, he's been living in Kansas City, and uh, we shot him a message, and uh, he jumped on the opportunity to come play with us, and he's a great asset to the band, super nice guy, and uh, uh, it's really good to have him in the band. Really working out well for you then, huh? Yep, for sure. Now, let's talk about your upcoming album. What What is it? October 23rd. Yes, it, sir. It drops. And uh, the big thing I want to talk about is Rises Equals, uh, the actual phrase, okay? Because I thought it was so cool when I first met you guys years and years ago, and you were using the phrase Rises Equals, because uh, this is Real Rock Nights, and our our whole... Uh, idea of Real Rock Nights is closer to the fan artist experience. We want people to understand that uh, the rock stars that they love, these people that they listen to all the time, aren't really much different from them. They just have really, really cool freaking jobs. And so I loved the phrase rises equals. And I'm guessing that it was a no brainer for you to put out Rises Equals, like, as an album? You know, this will be our very first full-length record. And, you know, last year being signed with Spine Farm, um, we knew that we wanted to do something for the fans, especially being our very first full-length. And, you know, the term Rises Equals came from uh, the idea of uh, almost empowering the fans um, to show our appreciation and how, how much we need them at, to be what we're doing to do what we do um so the term calling our fans are equals and the term rises equals is really about that and the whole the whole song you know the self-titled track of the song is is about the idea of needing to come together and work together and just showing that we're not really that different you know humans in general we all want the same things we all want to succeed we all want to be happy we all you know want to make a little bit of money and and, and do the thing you know so um that's really what that that song and and the album title is about and uh you know and every single song has its own little entity of you know real life introspective you know experiences and and uh, we really put, we put everything we had into this record. So, uh, you know, this is a stupid question for you because I already know what the answer is, but I love asking stupid questions. King <laughs> of Misery, okay? Yeah. 
that song kicks so much ass. Is it the best thing on the album? You know, it's one of my favorites for sure. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm kind of partial to a couple other ones, but um, um, it's definitely right up there. It's like, who do you love more, your mother or your father? You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing. So, so every single song, I, I, it, it depends. If I, hear, if I hear one song off the record, I'm like, oh, man, that's my favorite one. I go to the next one, I'm like, nope, that's my favorite one. So <laughs> it just keeps evolving like that, and I just, I, it just depends on the day, the hour, you know, what song's playing, and I just I gravitate towards that one. So it's, it's really hard to say. So King of Misery, the way it was written, I love this. Can you explain to the people watching, the people listening, exactly how you wrote this and how long did it take, man? You know, it was probably a couple week process by the time we started diving into it. Um, you know, through the chains of, of being signed with Spine Farm and, and a couple of the guys over there had worked with Trivium in the past and Trivium had done some work with David Draymond. And, uh, you know, long story short, turns out he was a fan of us. We are big fans of his. Um, so we had to do it over Zoom, which was exciting and depressing at the same time. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, you would have, it would have been cool to be in the studio with David Draymond. Oh, that would have been awesome. That would have been awesome. I mean, but even if it was just like this, which was fine, um, but uh, being together would have been great. It was just Zach and I sitting here with a couple of acoustic guitars and David, and uh, we came swinging. We had a couple ideas and we just pounded them out and, you know, over, you know, a couple of Zoom sessions a week. And uh, um, that's really how the song, you know, became what it is right now. And it was really cool. His input and, um, you know, having him do things that I probably wouldn't normally do, which was great. Um, his, I mean, the guy's, he, he's a lyrical and like melody. He's, he's a genius. I mean, that's why he's one of the legends. Um, so to have him come in and sing in the chorus with me of King of Misery and, and stuff like that was, was really something that, um, I will talk about forever because it was, it, it was a huge moment in our careers, you know, already even being on the first album on the, the first record deal we signed, you know what I mean? It was, yeah, it was amazing. But now, uh, is he one of those guys that, because I've, I've met, oh, probably a handful of guys that, uh, uh, they can it's almost like they hear stuff in their head yes and they can they can bring it out and it's balls on right away is he yeah. one of those guys yes very very much so um something you know zach and i the way we write music we definitely like to chew on stuff for a while um you know whether it's like you know zach will have a riff that i think is awesome um but he wants to chew on it for a while and evolve it you know rather than just like lay it down man is it it the one take it was the you know that's the route i think it should go so to have david come in and just be kind of really decisive is like you know just being like i, I brought in like a, the chorus idea and he's like that's great and we just molded it right there just it was that quick on how how it was and you know and he brought the idea of like when I'm trying to get a point across, I pretty much get louder and more aggressive, more growly. And he's like, you know, back off of all that. He's like, let's let the lyrical content and the melody carry the weight because it's heavy enough. And I was just like, okay, you know what I mean? So I didn't really get, you know, real, real heavy on the vocals, but it, it played out very well for the whole song. So he actually could hear and pull exactly what he wanted from pull from you guys exactly what he wanted to hear yes and yep. actually put everything that was already in his head along with what you guys were getting pulled out of you exactly yep exactly. That, is, that is awesome blake well i i want to thank you so much for being on real rock nights and uh you're in the real rock nights family now uh <laughs> i am gonna have you on probably i don't know every couple months if possible oh yeah count <laughs> me in 